الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا عاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ولي الصالح رب الطيبين وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسول السيد الوالد أجمعين وصلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما مزيدا نحمد الله ونشكر we thank Allah we praise Allah for this blessed gathering where we sit here and read and benefit from this tremendous or tremendous treatise uh, which is called or which the title is Kashf al-Shubahat which is the removal of doubts dealing with the shirk dealing with tawheed and shirk uh, by the great imam the mujaddid the reviver of islam in his time Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab rahimahullah ta'ala we're bringing some notes some some annotation from the great Sheikh uh, Ben Baz rahimahullah ta'ala in regards to some benefit done with this book. Um, I kind of lost track of the actual class. It's maybe like the eighth class or ninth class of the likes. This is a small book. It's not a real book, real big book. I believe we have maybe about six more really classes tops. Six. Yeah, about six more classes. Something like this. Taqeebun. Uh, nevertheless, today we're going to deal with the iqrar bila ilaha illallah wa anna muhammad rasulullah wa mtithalu ba'd al-awamir la yadfa' an ibadat al-kubur shirk. So this chapter we're going to deal with today is dealing with the establishing, the establishment of la ilaha illallah. And none has the right to be worshipped except Allah. And actually the testification and bear witness, uh, bearing witness that muhammad is the Messenger of Allah, وَمْتِثَالْ بَعْدَ الْأَوَامِرِ And actually doing some of the commandments, or some of the commands, لَا يَدْفَعْ عَنْ إِبَادَةِ الْكُبُورِ shirk. The one who worships the grave does not benefit from this, meaning this kalima, this statement. The one who does some of the things that, have, he have, that we have been commanded, and who bear witness and testifies that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah, and that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah, la yadfa. They do not benefit. They do not take benefit from this statement. So this is the actual text from the great Imam Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab rahimahullah. He says, "Wa idha tahqqta anna aladina qata lahum Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam asahu uqulan wa akhfu shirkin min haulai." So he says that when you, when it is established, or you have established that those whom the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fought were more sounder in knowledge and less severe in their shirk than those, individual, those individuals of our time. Right? Because remember, Sheikh Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab, he's given da'wah to those in the Arabian Peninsula, right? Which is, a, which is really the Mamlaka, the Saudi Arabia which uh, is a land of Islam, right? However, these people was, they was committing shirk, right? So he says that those individuals that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam fought against, meaning from the Quraysh, that they had stronger intellect and they had less shirk than the people of our time, right? فَعْلَمْ أَنَّ لِهَاُلَاءِ شُبْحَةٍ يُرِدُونَهَا عَلَى مَا, ما ذَكَرْنَا وَهِيَ مِنْ أَعْذَمْ شُبْحِهِمْ فَاسْغِي بِسِمِعِكَ لِجَوَابِهَا So he says that in explaining that those, meaning the Mushrikeen, the Quraysh, they, those individuals, they was more, they had sounder intellect, and they was less severe when it comes to the matters of shirk, meaning their matters of shirk, meaning as before we, the, the, the Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab explained, that the mushriks from before, they only uh, committed shirk in times of ease. But in times of difficulty, they abandoned those deities, they abandoned those statues, and they turned only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? <clears throat> Whereas though the mushrikeen of our time, those who commit shirk and on our time, like the Christians and the likes, they commit shirk all the time, whether it's in times of ease, whether it's in times of difficulty, all the time, that even they commit shirk. So he says that uh, 
that then you know that the the people of our time they have a doubt which they present and reply to what we have mentioned and this is from the greatest of their doubts so now we're talking about remember this is Kesra Shuba hat so these you know the sheikh he's bringing issues and removing and re to remove certain doubts so he's speaking about the mushrikeen of our time right specifically dealing with those whom he was calling so he said that they had they have these doubts right these are from the greatest of the doubts that they have so he says listen to that which is mentioned because these are from the greatest of the doubts that they have and this is that they say so this is their doubt. <coughs> the Shaykh Rahimahullah, he explains that their doubt, the doubt that the mushrikeen of his time, what they bring as a doubt, they say that verily, those whom the Quran was sent down to, meaning the Quraysh, right? The Arabs of that time, during the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that they, bear, they did not bear witness to La ilaha illallah. And they disbelieved or they denied the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they then rejected and they denied their, their, their resurrection. And Quran. And they rejected and they denied the Quran. And they said that it was magic. Then they says, However, us, we we bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah. We bear witness that Muhammad is the message of Allah. And we affirm the Quran. And we believe in the resurrection. Right? We pray and we fast. So how can we be like these individuals? Y'all with me? Y'all with me? Right? So these individuals, they're saying that they, they mostly came from before. They denied the Quran. They denied the Messiah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They didn't fast. They didn't pray. They didn't do none of these things. But they, remember, this is an Arabian Peninsula. they saying we affirm la ilaha illallah. We bear witness Muhammad is the message of Allah. Right, we pray, we fast, we bear witness in regards to the day of resurrection. So how are you gonna put us like these people? But of course these individuals who go to the grave and call on the dead and the likes, right? So this is a doubt that they're bringing. So our question is what? A jawabu ennahu la khila vain al ulama kulluhum en al rajan ida saddaqa rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi shay en wa kadda bahu fi shay en ennahu kafir. This is the principle. Lam yadkhul fil Islam, right? So he said, oh, how do we answer this? He says that there's no different amongst the scholars. That there's no different amongst the scholars when it comes to a man who affirms something from the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa kathabuhu fi shay'in. And then they deny some other things, meaning from that which came from the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, except innahu kafir except that he has disbelieved. And, Islam, and he haven't entered into Islam, right? You can't affirm some and deny others. You have to affirm. If you deny one, you deny everything, right? So he says, Oh, so he goes on to explain what? That just like if a person believes in some of the Quran, but they reject 
others, meaning other parts of the Quran. This is like if an individual they establish Tawheed, however, they are they establish Tawheed and they affirm Tawheed, but they deny or they reject the obligation of prayer. Or they affirm Tawheed, but they don't make the salat. Right? So he says, what jihad al wajub zakat are like an individual, yani they, or he says they they affirm to he of one, and they pray the salat, but they deny the obligation of zakat, or a person who akarabi kada kullihi wa jihad al or the individual who affirm all of that, they affirm to he, they pray and they get a zakat, but they deny fasting, right? Or he says, Oh, a karabi kulihi wa jihad al hajj. Or they affirm all of that, meaning they affirm fasting, they affirm the salat, they affirm zakat, they affirm tawheed, but they deny the pilgrimage. He says, Well, I'm Matt. And then he he brings. Uh, now. Well, I'm Matt. Lam yan qad unasun fi zaman al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lil hajj. أنزل الله في حقهم ولله 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 على الناس حج البيت من استطاع إليه سبيل ومن كفر فإن الله غني عن العالمين نعم. So the Sheikh رحمه الله he goes on to explain. نعم. He says, when the people in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu didn't comply inwardly with the obligation of Hajj, right? This is during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Some people didn't, they didn't affirm inwardly with the Hajj, right? Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala revealed in Surah Ta'ali Imran when he says, in Hajj to the house, meaning the Kaaba, is a duty that mankind owes Allah. Those who can afford the expense, and whoever disbelieves, then he is a disbeliever in Allah. Then Allah stands not in need of any of his creation. Then the Shaykh Rahimahullah he keeps going. Woman, akarra bihada kullihi wa jihad al baath. If an individual affirms Tawheed and they affirm all the pillars of Islam, they say we have to pray, we have to fast, we have to pay zakat. We have to, we have to, you know, we have to do all these things. We have to make the Hajj, but they say we don't believe in the Baath. We don't believe in the day of resurrection. Kafarabi ijma. Then this individual have been left the fools of Islam, and this is what the consensus. And he says, in his uh, blood, in his wealth, it is permissible. So he says, "Come, I call Allah Jalla wa Ala in the Ladina Yakfuruna bil Billahi wa Rasuli, where you read Dona and you furriku bain a lahi wa Rasuli, where you call on a not minobi barden, one nag for a be bar, one no read Dona and yet Tahidu bain a very casabila, Ula ikahumul kufar, Ula ikahumul kafirun hakken, Wa'atadana al kafirina ada bin muhin. So this ayat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks in about speaking about those who have this rejection with them, right? He says, And verily those who disbelieve in Allah and His Messenger and wish to make distinction between Allah and His Messenger, saying we believe in some of and we reject others, and wish to adopt a way in between. They are true disbelievers. Remember, Allah says they are true disbelievers. And we have prepared for the disbelievers a humili humiliating torment. Nah. So the Shaykh Rahimahullah, he keeps going, he says, وَإِذَا كَانَ اللَّهُ قَدْ سَرَّهَ فِي كِتَابِهِ أَنَّ مَنْ آمَنَ بِبَعْدًا وَكَفَرَ بِبَعْدًا فهو كافر فهو كافر حق وأنه يستحق ما ما ذكر زالت هذه الشبهة وهذه هي التي ذكرها بعض الأهل الإحسان في كتابه الذي 
arsal ar, arsala ilayna so the shaykh goes on to explain that when Allah has made it explicitly clear in his book that whoever believes in part of it and disbelieves in part of it then he is the kafir in truth right a person can't say I believe in these ayats and I don't believe in these ayats right this takes a person out of the folds of Islam so he says Yani and Allah says, Humul kafirun haqqan. Meaning they are true disbelievers. They are true disbelievers. So the Shaykh, he goes on to explain, then this doubt comes to an end. Right? Because remember, the doubt, what's the doubt? The doubt is, we bear witness that Allah is one. And he's the only one that deserves to be worshipped. We bear witness that Muhammad is the message of Allah, the seal of our prophet. We pray we fast, we give sadaqah, all of these things. So how can we be kafirs, basically? Because Sheikh Muhammad Ibn Abdul Wahhab is saying that you people are like the people during the time of the Prophet was the Quraysh. Y'all commit shirk. So they're like, they like, how can we do this? How can we do all this stuff? They didn't, they denied the Quran, they denied the Prophet was They denied prayer, they denied all these things. So how can we be like them? Not really understanding that just because you do those things but you commit shirk, it wipes all that away, right? It wipes all of that away. So your prayer, your fasting, whatever you got going on, your sadaqah, your hajj, all that stuff, if you got shirk with you, you don't. It, it's like it's not, it don't exist, right? So that's their doubt. Remember, because he brought, he said, well, how can y'all, how he said, they're saying, well, how can y'all put us on the same level and pair us with these people, these, these mushriks, who they denied Allah, they denied the Quran, they denied the Prophet, they denied fasting, they denied, they denied zakat, they denied all of these things. So, how are we like them? So, now he's explaining, right? You can't believe in some and, you, and disbelieve in, the, in others. That's not going to work. So, he says, either, shay'in. These are principles. He says, if an individual affirm the message, everything about the message, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, everything that he came with, an individual confirms everything that he came with. However, he denies the obligation of the salat. Not this. Not he don't deny the salat. He denied the obligation. These things must be clear. Right? So if a person is not praying, right? If a person, this is an issue. If a person is not praying, this is something that takes a person out of the folds of Islam. But now they got, we got to go a little bit more detail. The first thing is, is he praying this, uh, is he not praying this out of laziness? That's one issue, right? Another issue is, is he not praying because he feel like this a lot is not an obligation. That ain't no different amongst the scholars. That's Ijma and this individual have left the folds of Islam. If he denied the obligation, not meaning he might not pray, or he's not praying, but he also denied obligation. Or he might pray sometimes, but he don't feel like it's an obligation. This takes a person out of the fools of Islam, because it's a command. This is a pillar from the pillars of Islam. The salat is thabit, it's, it's, you know, it's official. Or it is, it is established. So he says that if an individual believe in everything that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with, he, if he if he affirm everything that he came with, but he says, listen, I, I, the Salat is not an obligation. He says, innahu kafir. Then this individual is a kafir. Halal al-dam bi ijma'. His blood had become permissible. And this is by the consensus. وَكَذَلِكَ إِذَا أَكَرَّ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ إِلَّا الْبَعْثِ وَكَذَلِكَ لَوْ جَهَدَ وُجُوب أَسْوَمَ رَمَضَان لَا تَجْهَدُ إِلَّا هَذَا وَصَدَّقَ بِذَلِكَ كُلُّ لَا يُجْهَدُ هَذَا وَلَا تَخْتَلَفُ الْمَذَاهِبْ فِيهِ وَقَدْ نَطَقَ بِهِ الْقُرْآنَ كَمَا قَدَّمْنَا So now the Sheikh is going on to explain to drive it a little bit more deeper and bring a bit more clarity. He says, if you establish everything 
but you deny the resurrection. Right? Hold on, he says, oh yeah, yeah, if you, he says, either a corrupt be kulli shayin illa al ba'ath. You, uh, you affirm everything about Islam, but you say it does a day of resurrection. I don't believe in it. It's not, that's not right. It's not going to work. Right? Even if you... Right? Even if you deny the obligation of fasting on Ramadan, Ramadan... Nah. Right? And he says also if an individual was to yeah, they reject the obligation of fast in the month of Ramadan and they didn't deny anything other than that. Right? So he says the individual affirmed everything except this obli- the obligation of fasting. Right? They didn't deny anything from the pillars of Islam except the obligation of fasting. Well, I talk to the madhahib fee. These scholars, they don't differ. No, the madhahib, they don't differ with this. No. Nah. He says, "Ma'alum an at-tawhid huwa a'dham faridatan ja'a biha an-nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam." So he goes on to explain that the greatest thing that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, al-farida, the greatest obligation that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have come with is at-tawhid. Wa huwa a'dham min min as-salat wa zakat wa sawm al-hajj. This is greater than the salat. This is greater than fasting. This is greater than hajj and the likes. Right? He said, This is greater than. Then, how can, if an individual denies these affairs, which are more, not disbelief? Even if they act upon everything that the Messenger came with, even if So he's explaining the Shaykh Rahimahullah. He says, if How can an individual deny to the Tawheed that all of the messengers came with? So, no. so he was explaining how if an individual was to deny the Tawheed in regards to the deen of the, of, the, of the messengers, how can they not be, how can this not deem them to be dis- disbelievers? He says, subhanAllah, ma a'ajab hadhal jahl. How amazing is this ignorance? Wa yuqalu aydun ha'ulai ashab al-rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Qatalu, qatalu bani Hanifa. And he says, also the companions of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they fought against Bani Hanifa, right? Or Banu Hanifa. Wa kad aslamu ma'an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These individuals, they accepted Islam during the time, during with the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These was people, these is a companion. A companion is who? What is the definition of a companion? Who met him? And? And who died upon believing? I uh, a person who met him and died upon believing, right? So these, so he says that the Ashab of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam qatalu Bani Hanifa. They fought against Banu Hanifa, and they was those who accepted Islam during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? Wa hum yashhaduna an la ilaha illallah. It was those who bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah. Wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah. And also there was those who bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Wa yusallun wa yuaddinun. There was those who prayed and there was those who called the adhan. Wa anqal. Anahum yakulun musaylama nabi. 
right? So now that we bring this statement, you have those from amongst them who said that this man, Moselema, was a prophet. They said Moselema was a prophet. Remember, this is from the Banu Hanifa, right? During the time of the campaigns, of the campaigns, they fought against these individuals. They fought against this tribe, Banu or Bani Hanifa. There was those who used to, they brought this man, Musaylima, and they said that he's like a priest, a prophet. So they brought him to the status of the Messiah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, Kulna hadha huwa matlub. Right? Then we would say, this is what we were seeking. Ida kana min rafa'a rajulan ira rutbat al-Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, kafir. Who does that in, in, our, in our country? Who raises a man? He said, whoever raises a man to the status of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is kufr. The FOI, right? No. The fruit. Whoever raises anyone to the status of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is this this kufr, this disbelief. Right? Wa ahalla maluhu wa damu. Right? And their blood and their, their wealth is made permissible. Wa lam tanfa'hu shafadatain. And their testification, it don't matter. Because remember, we're talking about individuals who was raised as Muslims, who bear witness, who pray, who do all these things, but they also commit shirk. It don't, it don't matter. So he said, these individuals who make this claim, who raise this man, will say lema to the status of the Prophet Wasallam, kafir. Even though they 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 testify and they bear witness with the shahada, saying don't matter. Wala, he says, wala uh, salat, right? <laughs> they don't have no salat. Fakifa bimin rafa ashamsan o Yusuf. These are other individuals that they raise up. Right, they raise up these individuals named Shamsan and Yusuf. Oh, Sahabi, you know, they raise up a prophet. I mean, they raise up a companion like Ali, right? The Shia, they raise Ali. Right, they go to his grave and everything. You see it in, in Medina, right? Or you see him trying anyway. Uh, or a prophet, or, you know, how can we, he says, how can we raise? We just talked about mission to Messiah was Solomon and someone being raised to his status. So how if we have these individuals like Shamsan and Yusuf and some of the companions or some of the prophets, if they are raised to the level of Jabbar Samawati Wal Ard, if they're raised to the status of Allah, meaning people going to them and calling on them, they're raised to the status of Allah. How then how? You know, how can they not be from those who would be uh would be dis, you know disbelievers. So he brought this ayah uh, where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in Surah Al-Rum, "Kathalika yatba Allah ala ala kulu biladina la ya la ya alamun." Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Thus does Allah seal the hearts of those who do not know." Does Allah seal the hearts to those who do not know? So we'll bring just a little benefit from that which uh, Sheikh Ben Baz have. So Sheikh Ben Baz, he said, يَذْخُرُ الشَّيْخُنَا رَحِيمَهُ اللَّهِ He said that our Sheikh, may Allah have mercy on him, mentioned, in the هَؤُلَاءِ الْمُشْرِكِينَ عُبَّادَ الْكُبُورِ That these mushriks, these polytheists, they are grave worshippers. And they are those who worship the pious and the righteous. He says, and they have with them this doubt. They have with them this doubt. Right? They have with them that this doubt. مَنْ كَفَرَهُمْ يعني, That whoever deems them to be Kafas is the hell of the ma'ahum and walahum anchor alayhim ibada to him, right? So he bring these principles now. He's making and he's bringing, he, he, he's, he, you know, he's, a, he's bringing or he's establishing that which or he's putting emphasis or reassuring that which the Sheikh have mentioned in regards to those who say that they are not that they are not like the Quraysh. And they are not like those who have came before based on the kufr and the shirk that they have with them. They bring this doubt. Right? So we say to them that we he says that Sheikh bin Baz Allah, he says, Naam, because they what they say what? They say, Man, we fast, we pray, we bear witness that none has a right to be worshipped except Allah, and that Muhammad is a messenger of Allah. Like how we not like the Quraysh. What are you talking about? The Quraysh they they denied the Quran, they denied Allah, they denied the Messiah We not we're nothing like them, right? So he says that we say to them individuals, Naam, antum tashhaduna Allah ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah. He said, Yes. We say to them, You bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah, and that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah. Lakin kadalla shari' 
على أن من جحد الشيء مما جاء به الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم كفر. This is very important. He says you do these these two main principles or these two main these two main this main pillar, right? These this two part main pillar meaning the shahada team. He said, however, the legislation indicates and have directed us to understand that whoever denies anything from that which the Messenger of came with is a kafir. Even if they do everything that he came with, sallallahu So now he's having a having a basically it's like a monarch, it's like a like a like a hewa, yeah, like a like a conversation, right? So he said that if you was to ask them, if mankind was affirmed to he. But they was the deny the salat. Don't don't they? Doesn't this make them disbelieve? He says, ho- hopefully they're gonna say yeah. This makes a person disbelieve. Oh, lam yu'min bil baath wal nushur yakfur. Or we was to say this individual. You know, if an individual don't believe in a day of resurrection, do they disbelieve? You know, you know. Right. So he says, hopefully they're gonna affirm yes that this makes a person. Then he goes on with zakat. Then he goes on with Ramadan. He can bring these examples, right? For those who have hajj or, you know, who have the ability, if they have the ability to make hajj, he bring all these examples. He says, فَإِذَا كَانَ هَذَا الْأَمْرِ مَعْلُومْ لَدَيْكُمْ He says, that if this matter is well known amongst us, وَأَنْ مَنْ تَرَكَ هَذِهِ الْأَشَاءَ جَاحِدًا لَهَا كَفَرْ Yet if an individual leaves any of these things, meaning the salat, the zakat, the day of resurrection. Any of these things that this makes him a disbeliever. فَكَيْفَ بِمَنْ جَحَدَ الشَّهَادَتَيْنَ فَمَعْنَاهُمَا How about the individual who rejects and denies the actual meaning of the shahadatain, right? Because you can't call on others except that you going against that. You're going against the shahadatain, really with your actions. So he says, how can this, if this individual is denying the actual meaning of the shahadatain, right? And that is the worship, and, and they, what they're doing is they're worshiping others along with Allah. إِذَا كَانَ مَنْ جَعْلَ الْمُسَلِّمَ النَّبِيًّا كَمُحَمَّدْ يَكْفُرْ إِنْ دَ جَمِيعٍ He said, he said, we see that, that, that whoever made this individual musallima, right? As we said from Bani Hanifa, they made him, at the, they put him at the level of the Prophet ﷺ, and this made them disbelieve by everybody. And even, even with this, the companions fought them. They was compelled to fight them. And how about the people raising individuals, creation to the status of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? He says, وَإِذَا كَانَ مَنْ جَعَلَ الْفَوْكَ رَتْبَةَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَكْفَرْ Right? لِأَنَّهُ جَعْلَهُ نَبِيًّا وَمُحَمَّدٍ خَاتِبَ النَّبِيِّينَ And then he goes on to explain that the, whoever brings uh, a man or somebody to the status of the Prophet Sallam, or above folk, he says, and لِأَنَّهُ جَعْلَهُ نَبِيًّا وَمُحَمَّدٍ خَاتِبَ النَّبِيِّينَ Right? And we know that the Messiah Sallam is the seal of our prophets. There's no other prophets coming. That's it. فَكَيْفَ بِالَّذِي رَفَعَ شَخْصٍ شَمْسَانٍ أو يوسف أو ابن ابن عوام وغيرهم. So he goes on to explain. So what about if we're talking about raising a man to the to the status of the Prophet or higher? Then what about uh, raising these individuals to the status of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala? And he mentioned some of the people: Yusuf, Shamsan, Ibn Awan, and the likes. Now, this is important. He says, Sheikh Mabaz Rahimahullah, will be have a tabayan and in any in them in Atabil Umur, a shirish al Mashrua, 
wa akarru biha lakinhu ata yuna binaqid batalat tilka al-umur this is a principle he said that with this it, it clarifies that when we're dealing with some of the legislative matters if we affirm some something but something comes that denies it batala then it wipes it away it wipes that matter away meaning when a person is t- testified they bear witness, but then they start committing shirk, right? It wipes it away. It, do, it doesn't stay. It doesn't remain, right? So he says, إِذَا أَتَى بِنَاقِدْ مِنْ نَوَاقِدِ الْإِسْلَامِ مِنْ جَهَدَ وُجُوبَ الصَّلَاةِ جَهَدَ وُجُوبَ الزَّكَاءِ جَهَدْ يعني جَهَدَ وُجُوبَ الصَّمَ رَمَضَانِ وَجَهَدَ الْحَجْ جَهَدَ الْبَعْثِ وَالنُّشُورِ نعم جَهَدَ Kon Muhammad Khatim and Nabiyin. He bring all these things like whoever denies the obligation to fast in the month of Ramadan or making a Hajj or the day of resurrection or they deny that the Messiah is the seal of our prophets. You kafir or yakfiru and the jamir. With all of the scholars in the consensus that this individual who have any of these things with them have disbelieved. Naam. وَأَشْرِكْ مَعَ اللَّهِ فِي الْعِبَادَةِ وَغَيْرُهُ And they have committed shirk with Allah when we're talking about ibadah. فَهُوَ أَوْلَى وَأَوْلَى بِأَنْ كُونَ كَافِرًا وَلَا تَنْفَعَهُ تِلْكَ الْعِبَادَةَ الَّذِي أَكَرَّ بِهَا فَعْفِعْلُ So he goes on. And he's just explaining that. Yani this is from Bab al-Ula. Meaning, this is even more so. We have the example of those who the companions fought and deemed to be disbelievers from those who raised the man at the status of the Prophet ﷺ. So he's basically saying, how can we with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala see these things and we don't correct them? We see these things and we don't correct them. And then he says, Kama anna sahaba qatalu na bani, bani Hanifa. And the, Prophet, the, the companions of Allah they fought the tribe of Bani Hanifa. وَهُمْ يُسَلُّونَ And it was those who prayed. وَيَسُومُونَ It was those who fast. وَيَشْحَدُونَ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَأَنَّ مَحَمَدَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ They bear witness to the shahadatain. وَلَكَنْ صَدَقُوا مُسَيْلِمَ وَأَنَّهُ نَبِي Right? He says, وَلَكَنْ صَدَقُوا الْمُسَيْلِمَ أَنَّهُ نَبِي Right? And even this guy, this Musaylima, he even affirmed that he was a prophet. Remember this individual they disbelieved. And they even bring this other person. Uh, if a, if an individual have this with them, from the aspect of uh, affirming that someone have come to the status or said the status of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is wrong. So we stop here, inshallah ta'ala. I hope y'all follow me, huh? Have that. Ma indi wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiya na Muhammad wa ala ali wa sahbihi wa sallam. So y'all get the just right. It don't matter what you do. You can have things of you from that which is good, but if you commit shirk, it wipes it away. No. Right. He said like if it if shirk enters into a bad uh, it wipes it away. So of course these individuals this during the time of Sheikh Muhammad Ibn Abdul Wahab, he's in he's in he's in the Arabian Peninsula, Saudi. These individuals he had individuals that started worshiping the graves. But they individuals who was raised Muslim who had thobes on, had turbans and the likes. So they like, how you saying we on shirk? We pray, we fast, we give us a cat, we we testify. How we how we commit shirk? Because we go into this grave and asking this righteous man to call on Allah for us, you know. But of course, we're saying it don't matter what you do. Just remember what the shaykh is saying. It don't matter what you do. If you do something that nullifies that, it wipes it away. So yeah, y'all bear witness. Y'all fast. Y'all give us a cat. Y'all do all these good deeds, but y'all go commit shirk. It's not a boy. It's not a boy.
was sitting up here. I was sitting up here. I started. I started slowing down. Yeah, that's a Maradona. That Maradona shit is on beat. This shit like what is that? Powering down, huh? Thanks for that. This is over late, man. I'm sitting here listening to this. You just want to let it go. They've been so loud, man. I was sitting here powering down. Man, you need to fix it, man. Some shit going on. Uh, no, I'm not sick. I hope not. My house is.